Today we are learning about breakpoints in Framer. Your website may be viewed across multiple devices. It can be a desktop, tablet or a mobile. So it is very important to make it responsive. And this is where Framer breakpoints can help you. First, we'll optimize this web page for a desktop variant so that it looks amazing on any desktop out there, whether it's a wide screen or a smaller screen. And then we'll use breakpoints so that it looks just as amazing on tablet and mobile. Remember, whenever you are trying to make a website responsive, always use stacks. And if you want to know more about stacks, watch the video I've made on this topic. You can find its link in the description and in the top right corner. So let's get started. The web page has a built-in navbar, a hero section and two other sections. One is a horizontal stack with two elements and another is a horizontal stack with four cards. The file is available in the description, so you can follow along with this video or maybe you can practice later. First I'll preview the web page and see that as I change the width of the web page, the content does not adjust accordingly. To fix this, first I'll change the width of the containers in each section to fill. Change the width of the navbar to fill. Hero section to fill. This section to fill. And the card section to fill. Now I'll preview this. And see that the content is adjusting according to the width of the web page. But it's still not what we want. The spacing and layout is all messed up. Look, the text written in the middle of the hero section is not scaling as the web page width is changing. Now to take care of this, I will change the width of the text to fill and also adjust the height to fit content. Change the text size to fit and I'll keep it at 90%. Now change the height of the container to fit content. I'll check this and see. As I change the width, the text scales with it. But see, as I expand too much, the text gets way too large. And it also messes the vertical view of the website. Plus, I want the content on the website to follow a layout. Like the content should be lined between two imaginary lines. Which means I want them to follow a grid layout. So now I will add a maximum width property on the hero section and set it to 1160 pixels. Now see, the text only expands up to a certain point and does not look bad. Now I'll go back and apply the maximum width property on other sections too. Add maximum width of 1160. And same for the card section. Let's preview and see the content is nicely lined vertically. Now I'll create the breakpoints, one for the tablet and one for the mobile. Now the website has basically three versions or three breakpoints. This breakpoint will be visible on the desktop. This one will be visible on the tablet and this one will be visible on the mobile. Now I'll optimize the tablet variant. The navbar is pre-built, so it's already optimized by default. And if you want me to create a video on making different type of navbars from scratch, comment down below so I would know if you are interested. And in the meantime, subscribe to the channel. The hero section is already looking good because the font is adjusting according to the width of the web page. The size of the button is already looking good. But to check, first I'll preview this. Look. In the tablet variant, the sizing is really perfect here. Now I'll go back and go to the next section. Now this is problematic. First, the content is touching the edge of the web page and it breaks layout. Second, the text is too big. So first, I'll add padding of 50 pixels on the left and 50 pixels on the right. So now the content and the edge of the web page has a spacing of 50 pixels. Now I'll follow this padding for the next section too. So the layout is followed properly here. Now decrease the text size by 2 pixels. And same for the other one. Let's preview and check. Ok, it looks good now. Now go back and move to the next section. 
and do the same for the containers here. Adding padding of 50 pixels on the left and 50 on the right. But the cards now are too cluttered. So I'm thinking of making two rows here. Each row will have two cards. Now change the layout of container to grid. The spacing between them should be 80 pixels. If you don't like to use the grid in this case, you can of course keep it as a horizontal stack and decrease the overall size of the text. It all depends on what looks good on the website. I just wanted to show you the method of using grids for different breakpoints. And this is especially useful when there were icons instead of images. Now let's move to the mobile breakpoint. The header text looks good, but I will increase the vertical space to 1.4. Ok, now it looks good. The button is too large here, so first I will decrease the width by 20 pixels and height by 10 pixels. Also decrease the text size by 2 pixels and decrease the size of the arrow. Now I'll preview this and see now it looks really good. Now I'll go back and move to the next section. The text here is all crunched up. First, I'll change the stack layout to vertical stack. Now, I'll decrease the text size of this text by 4 pixels. And this one also by 4 pixels. Now, I'll add padding on the container. 20 pixels on the right and 20 on the left. Let's preview. And see it looks perfect. Now go back and move to the next section. First I'll also add some padding here. 20 pixels on the right and 20 on the left. The cards are not looking good here. So now let's check which layout suits better here. First I'll change this to vertical stack. And yeah it looks good. But I will adjust the height of the cards to fit content. So there is not much empty space between them. Let me quickly change the height of all of them to fit content. Now also adjust the text size for these cards. I will decrease the heading text by 2 pixels. And body text also by 2 pixels. I will do the same for other cards too. Now it looks good, but let's check if a grid would look better here. Change the layout to grid. I think grid would be more suitable if there were icons here instead of image. But since these are images, we have to give them appropriate size. So viewer does not find any difficulty in viewing what's inside the image. So I'll switch it back to vertical stack. So this is it for the framer breakpoints. And if you are confused between Webflow and Framer for your design projects, make sure to watch this video, where I compare both of them based on their strengths and weaknesses.